Hey, this is a happy early Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Um, and this is going to be my story time about my pregnancy with the girls and my birth. And I'm just going to combine like the first year or two of their lives. I'm going to add um, a lot of pictures. I'm going to add some videos. And yeah. So I hope you enjoy. Um, okay, so. I feel like I found out I was pregnant in like September of 2014. I had met the girl's dad years before that. We disconnected and then we connected again and then I ended up getting a job at the club and he paid for everything. He just held me down and was supportive throughout that whole journey. And um, I ended up in a relationship with him um during our relationship i never really asked um what he did i didn't really want to know i felt like you know i knew we were living on the edge i guess but um if i was asked by anyone what he did i could honestly say i didn't know and um a part of me was always kind of fearful of that and then a part of me was kind of like just in love and just i don't know but yeah so um got pregnant probably like in august we had went on a like five six day trip um to many cities we started here we went to portland we went to seattle we went to houston we went to albuquerque new mexico casinos then we went to phoenix i saw my dad like it was a trip like we was just gone we were not home it was like a good week and a half two week trip um once we got back um uh, we got back like this was in september had to be i don't know don't quote me on the dates because it was so long ago but Whenever it was, we left, and then when we came back, um, we weren't even home for that much longer. We were living in a townhouse before we left. Um, and then when we came back, we were having a lot of trouble with our neighbors, and he had plenty of money for us to be able to pick up and leave. So when we came back from our long vacation, um, we literally like packed up the whole townhouse in 24 hours, and we moved. Like we had already talked to um, this guy at a condo in Buckhead. It was like a penthouse and we were just living, like just enjoying life and enjoying each other. So we, we decided that we wanted to move to the penthouse. And then um, we literally packed up and moved all our stuff into the penthouse like in, in like hours, I feel like. We had did it so fast and then we ended up leaving to go out of town. So we um and if i said that wrong i'm correcting myself we searched for the condo found the condo got the keys to the condo moved all of our stuff out of the townhouse into the condo and then when we came back we came right back home to the condo so um when we had got back we weren't even home a good week and he left back out again for work um and then when he left back out for work uh i was still dancing at the time and i did not know i was pregnant at the time i was feeling um weird this is like beginning of October. Um, the day that I'm talking about is like the 6th um, of October. Um, and sorry about the noise. And if the girls come in here, that's because they're home. Um, you okay? What's wrong, mommy? Hmm? Don't get no letter soup on my bed. Mommy's recording a video. Okay, you okay? I'm gonna come in here in a minute, okay? So, um, we got back home and he immediately left back out after a couple days. I didn't know I was pregnant at the time. Um, and I'm trying to think. When he left, I got up and I went to work. And, um,
on the way to work y'all i'm sorry it was so long ago so on the way to work um i left out of the townhouse i mean the condo got in the car went to the kroger across the street because at the time we had red box movies now mind you he's out of town he left for work um i get to the red box and even like as soon as i get out the car and start to go put my um red box into the machine i get a call from his really close friend his girlfriend so i know him and his close friend are on the trip together but she calls me which we were cool so i didn't think nothing of it when she called me i thought she was calling a gossip or whatever because we used to sit and talk about our boyfriends with each other like he's getting on my nerves what's he doing blah 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 and then we would hang out we went to the gun range like we were just chilling so um it wasn't out of the normal for her to call me so i stuck my red box in the machine got back in the car and she called my phone and i'm like hey what's up she was like um can you come over? I'm like, yeah, is everything okay? She was like, um, no, girl, it's bad. It's really bad. I need you to come over. I need you to come over now. So I'm like, is he alive? Is he alive? Is he alive? Like, that's the first thing I asked her. And she was like, yeah, he's alive. He's okay. Um, but it's really bad. It's really bad. I need you to come over because I don't want to talk over the phone. So I'm like, all right. Um, so I immediately just don't even go to work. I go straight to her house. And um, she's sitting there like shook. Like you could tell she's shook. She doesn't really know what the heck is going on, whatever. So um, I get to I get to sitting down and I'm listening to, cause now she's talking on the phone to her dude and he was with them when everything just went crazy or whatever. And um, yeah, it was a lot going on. So we found out that he got in trouble and um that all of them had gotten in trouble we found out and then um i was beside myself i was like crying i was upset because it was like i felt helpless i couldn't help him he wasn't in his state i didn't know what's going on i didn't have enough answers like i was literally tripping out um like i don't know i i couldn't imagine sleeping at that new place by myself like I knew that it would be for a couple of days, but I didn't think that it would be, you know, for however long that it was going to be. Like, I just didn't have enough answers. So I was really panicking. So um, after I end up leaving her house, I go home because now I don't want to go to work anymore because I just cannot believe what's going on. Like, it's surreal to me. Um, and I had literally just spoke to him before I left the house to go to the red box because he told me he was about to send me some money. Um, and then everything happened so fast. So when I... Uh, got back in the house I had already had some pregnancy tests on me because I had a pregnancy scare before so I had some left so um I could kind of feel that my body was feeling weird and it was out of the norm I was sensitive to smells um my boobs were tender I was cramping um yeah it was it was like weird stuff going on um with my body so I went on ahead and I took the test and the test came back positive so I took another one because it was a pack of three. I had only used one. So um, I took the two that I had and the other one was positive. So I was like, oh shit, I'm pregnant. Lord have mercy. Like now I'm nervous. So um, this was like October the 6th when all of this happened. I found out that night. Uh, I couldn't get in contact with him until the next day. When he called me to tell me everything that was going on because the only communication i had about it was through the friend's girlfriend and that's because he his ass fleed the, the area and got away temporarily but he was able to give us information on what was going on so um when he called me he let me know what was going on he let me know how much it was going to be to get him out it ended up being fifteen thousand dollars a little over fifteen thousand dollars to get him out once he got out, he came home. I was so eager. I was at the airport like way early waiting at the top of the elevator for him to just emerge from the elevator because I missed him so much. And um, I was just so worried about him. Like you don't ever want to see anybody that you love in a place like that. Like just to know or to even think, to wonder what they're going through. It was just a lot for me. And I stopped eating. 
um he was in there for like a good three weeks like almost a whole month it took us to to get everything together go through bonding agencies and stuff to try to get the money from here to another state like it was a lot going on trying to get in touch with an attorney and all that stuff meanwhile i still didn't tell him that i was pregnant because it was just a lot going on so when he came home he came he took him a shower or whatever he said he was about to go get him a haircut so right before he left right before he left i decided that i i needed to tell him real quick so i'm like hey He's like, what's up? I remember him standing in the kitchen. I'm like, I'm pregnant. He was like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, I'm pregnant. He was like, bro, this is not the right time. Like, it's a lot going on. I'm like, I know, I know, I know it's a lot going on. But, like, I mean, we didn't prepare for this. Like, we didn't know. I, I definitely didn't know. But, you know, I just know that I'm pregnant. And, like, I plan on keeping it. So, he was like damn man this is crazy i don't want to raise my kids and be locked up you know i want to be here for my children i want to be here through the pregnancy like i don't know what's going on with this case and i just don't want to be in prison or locked up when my babies are born you know i just don't want to miss important parts of their life like damn this is a real fucked up situation blah 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 so um i'm like you know i understand that and i'm i'm rolling with the punches so um, after that, he, after he had came home, he stayed home for about two weeks and then he ended up having another court case. At the time when he first got in trouble, it was a state case. It was state versus whoever. Um, after he went back to court mid-November, the feds picked it up. So all that we had did to get him out the first time when the feds picked the case back up, he got rearrested. So his attorney called me and told me everything that was going on. I was just beside myself. I was in tears. I could not stop crying. I didn't know what to expect. I'm like, so what can I do? Is there another bond that needs to be paid? He's like, well, we'll let you know. Nine times out of 10, he doesn't have a criminal record. So they'll let him sign himself out. And he showed back up for court, which was the only reason that people don't receive bond is if they're a flight risk so he's not considered a flight risk so the odds of him receiving bond are really high so just don't give up keep your hopes up whatever so i'm just crying i'm beside myself i'm you know still trying to take it day by day go to work and when i get to work i'm just crying like i just can't believe what's going on i can't believe that i'm pregnant i don't want to be at work you know the smoke was bothering me the hookah smell was making me nauseous the smell of the food i just didn't like it like it was a lot going on so i decided that i wasn't going to dance anymore um once i had come home from work the last night that i worked i was kind of just sitting in there by myself and that was the that was like one of the worst feelings that I've had in a long time just kind of sitting there by yourself because something done happened and it's out of your control like he's not out of town you can't just call him and talk to him he's not at work or nothing like that like he's in a space where you know you wouldn't want to see any of your loved ones in that space so it was a tough um situation for me what is it baby What is it, Mom? There's a charger in there for you. Are you still in my another another charger? I'm coming back to get it. Go ahead, go use it right now. But I'm gonna come back and get it. Um, you don't want to see any of your loved ones in that um in that predicament, you know. And then just kind of sitting in the house by myself, like I was just kind of empty. Like I was empty. I was kind of broken. I was upset, you know. Like I just didn't know really how to feel. And, um, yeah, it was just a tough, it was a real tough time for me. Like, I used to just sit in there and cry. I would sit in the tub and cry um, because I just couldn't change anything. So, um, I stopped going to work. It took him about a month and a half this time. I feel like it took him about a month and a half to actually get out. It probably was even longer than that, y'all. It was a while. Um, but by that time, I had moved out of the place because I didn't want to stay there anymore if he wasn't going to be there. And we didn't know. I didn't know when he was going to be released or anything. Um, and they were pushing his court dates court dates out like 30 days. So um, I ended up moving from there. I didn't want to stay there anymore. I wanted to be surrounded by, you know, some family. So I moved in with my sister. Um, at this time, I'm still early pregnant. Uh, I went to the doctor 
and at this point I feel like I'm about six weeks pregnant so when I get there I tell them hey you know I think I'm six weeks pregnant he goes ahead and does the ultrasound he puts the one that's on top of my belly with the gel and then as he's listening he's like this heartbeat is pretty strong when did you say you got pregnant I'm like I feel like I got pregnant at this time he was like well that will put you right at six weeks but this is not a six-week heartbeat like this heartbeat is pretty strong he was like from the sound of the heartbeat I'm getting 12 weeks so I'm like 12 weeks three months I don't think I'm three months like that's pretty far I'm like I'm pretty positive when I conceived so he was like okay um all right so he starts to like wipe off my belly and then he starts to prepare to walk out the door and he was like okay well we're going to schedule for a vaginal ultrasound on friday and then before he exits for good he says let me ask you something though do twins run in your family so i was like why would you ask me something like that like excuse me sir why'd you ask me that he was like oh nothing we'll see you back on friday and just let it go so um i leave the doctor's office i go home and i call april my friend um and i'm like hey girl this is what they said he asked me do twins run in my family she was like girl you better not be pregnant with twins i'm like tell me about it like that would be crazy you know all of this stuff we're going through and then bam i'm pregnant not only am i pregnant but i'm pregnant with twins like what are the odds like i'm like ugh. I could deal with one baby. I don't know if I could deal with two babies. Lord have mercy. This is crazy. Like, what are the odds that I could be pregnant with twins? My mom has twins. My dad has twins. Now I could potentially have twins. I'm like, she was like, no, nah, I don't think you having twins or whatever. So um, she takes me to my next doctor's appointment. And when we get there, she does the vaginal ultrasound. And she was like, yep, twins. And she spun the, the um, little monitor around. So I was like, oh. That was my literal response. I just bust out laughing because like, and then I looked at her and her reaction was the same. She was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like it's really twins. I could not believe it. I was just laughing. I was in such a state of shock. Like I was like, what the heck? No way, two babies. So um, I just couldn't believe it. So she gave me pictures or whatever. And then, um, when the other doctor came back in he was like congratulations i'm like you knew he was like listen i didn't want to say i just knew the heartbeat was strong so you know i want to be correct before i say anything and that's why we got this done for you but um uh, right before i left he was like what's your Ooh, excuse me he's like what's your name again so i'm like you should know my name like i i know you have a lot of patients but i mean look at the chart or something but my um friend who recommended me to him told me that he's getting old or whatever so and he was way out of um he was way out of the district for um where i wanted to actually give birth to my babies due to the fact that i was carrying twins um i heard that it's a popular hospital out here that has the number one NICU center in the region i think or country or something like that so i wanted my babies to be in that environment like um, I just wanted to make sure that my children were going to be, um, when I gave birth to my children, they were going to be in the best place possible for, you know, if anything, God forbid, was to happen, I know that I would be in a good place. So, um, yeah, uh, when I got back home after my friend took me, April took me home, I got back in the house and I told my sister and then I told my mom, they were happy, they couldn't believe it. And then um, I waited eagerly for his phone call. I was like, yes, it's just okay. When he calls me, when he called me, I can't wait to tell him. So he ended up video chatting me. So I was laying on the bed and I was like, I'm pregnant, as you know, and it's twins. He was like, no way. I'm like, yes. He's like, yo, bro, I'm having twins, bro. Like telling people around him. So he was like, this is crazy. He was like, y'all, I want two boys. So now we just planning or whatever while we're on the phone. So, you know, that was like the little bits of joy that I was able to pull out of the situation. Like the situation that was so like unexpected, so terrible. But those were like little little bits and pieces that kind of just made me happy and I would be okay. So um, after that, he ended up coming home uh, like the next year, early the next year. I feel like he came home or maybe right before Christmas or something. I don't know. I feel like it was the next year though, um, beginning of 2015. 
So when he came home, he wasn't able to stay with me. He got he had to be released to um, some immediate family. So I think he had to be released to his mom. So it was a little bummer because I was like, dang, you know, I really want him to stay with me, whatever, whatever. We ended up working it out and he ended up being able to come and stay with me after Valentine's Day, which I was so excited because I was like, yes. And he was on house arrest, so I knew that even if he go hangs out, he, even if he goes to hang out, he has to be back at the house by 8 p.m. So I could clock him. I was like, thank you. So come on back home. But, um, yeah, my pregnancy was pretty cool. I feel like um, I didn't really have morning sickness. Um, my doctor was awesome. Lena, I love her. I have no clue where she is to this day, but um, she made my life a breeze as far as my pregnancy was concerned um i had to go to two doctors the entire pregnancy one was a maternal fetal specialist and the other one was um just a regular OBGYN. and um, maternal fetal did a lot of things because i was considered a high-risk pregnancy so literally i was seeing a doctor every week um if not twice a week like i would schedule one appointment at one time and then literally leave that one and go to the next one good thing about it they were in the same building so one was on six one was on seven so i would just go up and down and then can it for the day and go home um but my pregnancy was pretty easy no morning sickness just a little nausea um but they prescribed me this medicine called dicleges and then um after i would take the dicleges at night i would wake up in the morning i was fine i craved um french toast and at the time i was working from home for apple throughout my whole pregnancy and um yeah my pregnancy was pretty cool he would come home he would uh give me some money i would go online i would buy a whole bunch of stuff online for the girls i was just buying all kinds of cute stuff um slowly but surely my sister has a four bedroom home beautiful home and we took one of the rooms she of course had a room and then there were two extra rooms so she allowed us to turn one of the rooms into a nursery so we had um put things on our registry and stuff and people started slowly buying things um my dad's friend bought us a crib um we had dressers from my mom uh rocking chair from my mom we just every day while i was when i got off work i would just add things to the nursery and paint the walls and uh refurnish the refurbish or whatever reupholster the dressers um refinish them i guess um what else i would uh fold their clothes over and over again, unfold them. You know, I wash them, then I fold them, then I'll unfold them, then I'll put them in separate drawers and I'd be like, no, I kind of wanted to go this way. Then I would Roy G. Biv the clothes. Like I was legit bored, but I was just enjoying it. Um, uh, the day that I had the girls, um, the day that I had the girls, we had to go to the airport because we needed a rental car. I was getting close to being to giving birth and we didn't have a vehicle at the time no we did i'm sorry we had a vehicle but either it was experiencing some problems or um it was a coupe anyway so it was like a little six series coupe and i was not gonna keep getting in and out the back of that and i couldn't imagine putting two car seats in the back of that so um we needed a rental until i was able to get a car um we went and went to the airport to go get the rental and i stood up the whole time and we waited it was memorial day weekend so we waited for some hours like an hour and some change um maybe even two hours and they kept offering me a chair kept offering me a chair and i'm like no i don't want a chair i just want to stand up you know it made me feel better my back was hurting i could pace the floor i just didn't want to sit down anytime i sat down in that heat my belly would sit on my thighs and i hated it so i would opt to stand up um so i was just standing up and people kept trying to offer me a seat and i'm like no like if y'all want to help me just let us go in front of you but um we waited and then and then after um when it was our turn we ended up getting the rental car we went home and when we got home my contraction started getting disrespectful um and i was like this is different so i thought they were braxton hicks i'm like okay all right it's really like contracting so i'm like okay um I'm watching it 
I get on my phone. I have this app on my phone that had tracked my pregnancy the entire time. I got on my phone and I would clock the contractions. And it was like, um, it went from being like four minutes apart to three minutes apart to two, then back to three, then back to four, then back to two. But it was, they were close. Like they were really close. And um, at the time, I knew that my doctor had told me that my daughters were breech. One of them was breech and one of them was ready to come head, head first. And because of the way that they were positioned and I was out of room, he wasn't going to be able to move them around to be able to allow me to have a vaginal birth. So he had already scheduled me for a C-section. So I had got up and I went and took a walk around the neighborhood with my sister. And I was hoping that it made me feel better, but it didn't. When I got back in the house, I finally called the doctor and I told him that I think I'm in labor. And he was like, are you sure? At this point, I'm 36 weeks and six days. He was like, what are you feeling? I told him what I was feeling. I told him that I was clocking it. He asked me how far apart they were. I told him, he said, all right, meet me at Northside. I'll be there. So I'm like, all right, cool. Get in the car, go all the way to the hospital. Um, and we get there around like 11.45. They check us in immediately, take me to the room immediately. He comes in, he does a cervix check immediately. Like everything was happening so fast. Um, after he does the cervix check, he's like, okay, are you nervous? I'm like, yes. Um, he tells me it's nothing to be nervous about. They're going to come do the epidural. You know, it's important that I don't move, blah, blah, blah. They come, they do the epidural. And um, he comes back after a minute or so and then comes and pricks my leg with like thumbtacks, asking me, can I feel it? You know, some of them I could feel. Others I couldn't feel. So we were waiting on a part, one part of my body to get more numb um, before he moved me. Uh, came back in the room he gave they came in and gave him all the c-section gear from head to toe so that he could be dressed and ready for the operating room when we got in the operating room they went on ahead and started to do what they were gonna do and I kept feeling so much pressure I'm like I feel pressure I feel pressure and I'm like what's going on I can't breathe I can't breathe dude now I'm looking at the monitor I'm just panicking because I don't know what's going on like it feels like a whole bunch of pressure on my chest like just so much pressure so I'm over here like am I breathing like I'm looking at the monitor the man's like you're okay you're okay I felt so much pressure like it was so much pressure and then finally I heard a cry and I was like <gasps> and then I heard another cry and then they brought my two babies around to me and I could not believe that I had carry babies and they were in my face and they were crying I was so amazed like Wow, um, because, you know, the further I got along in my pregnancy, I used to be really afraid of stillbirth um, because of my size. At my first uh, measuring, well, scale, weight, whatever, when they took my weight at the very beginning of my pregnancy at six weeks, I was 97 pounds. By the time I finished, I ended up being like 140 something, almost 150. Um, and yeah like i was amazed like i could not believe that i had carried my babies and that they were healthy and that they were so long in front of me i just was like oh my gosh i was in awe um after they closed me up they wheeled me to another room and then when i got to the other room i looked at the side i only saw them cleaning up one baby so i'm like where's my other baby and um now i started to worry and she was like no worries um one of them was having a respiratory issue baby a was having a respiratory issue and um they had to take her immediately to the NICU and she was like once we get you cleaned up and settled in your room you can go down there and go see her so i'm like okay i'm like is she gonna be okay and i'm just asking questions because i have no clue um and they were like no she's okay uh they just you know this is protocol and i'm like thinking back to my decision to even come here is because that they are like this like one little thing they're looking into it they're checking into it they're going to make sure they have the number one NICU so um they take me to my room they allow me to see my other baby she's so precious oh my gosh it was Nora and um she was just sleeping she wasn't really crying much she had the perfect little wavy hair um so adorable slim long i was just amazed like i could not believe that i had a, a baby you know and that she was right in my hands like 
I just couldn't believe it. So the second that they told us that we could get up and go check on her, I got up and I started to walk. And they were like, are you serious? Do you want a wheelchair? I'm like, no, I got it. It's okay. Like, I felt like it was okay for me to walk. Like, I felt like I could walk. But as soon as I got down the hallway, I didn't even bend the corner. And I had been two corners to get on the elevator. I didn't bend the first corner. And I was like, I reached down and held my stomach and tried to pull it up because it was like dragging down. And I forgot that they stapled me clothes so I feel like the staples was kind of like doing like this so I had like grabbed myself because it was burning really bad and I held on to it and I'm like okay no, no no I definitely need a wheelchair so um he had went and got a wheelchair and brought it back brought it back and then um he wheeled me downstairs and I got to hold her for the first time because I didn't get to hold her and she was so adorable and she was sitting in the NICU all by herself and it made me cry because you know, I was so worried about her and they basically told me that she didn't know how to eat on her own yet and that they had to tube her. Um, she was a little jaundiced and she definitely needed to clear her airway. She had some respiratory issues, but other than that, baby A is perfectly fine. Like she just needs to learn how to eat on her own and then we'll be able to, you know, m move her. So I'm like, okay. So, um, day one in the hospital, it was fine. I, I held on to Nora all night. Um, day two in the hospital they started to try to get my bowels to moving again um the first night uh after they brought me into the room it took me forever to urinate i was holding on to the bar for so long just trying to just hold on the two nurses was in the bathroom with me trying to get me to urinate and it was after they removed the catheter it was just so hard for me to do it so i was focused i was like shaking i was holding on like just trying to get it to come out trying to just do what they need me to do so that they can leave me alone um, finally, I pee and I pee for what seemed like forever from them um, putting all those fluids in me. And then once I was done, they put me back in the room. They put these little socks on my legs and put like some little things on my legs that were like kind of like uh, compressing my legs so that the blood could be flowing again. Um, and then once they did that is when I went to go check on my baby. But um, after that night, I held on to Nora the whole time. And then when I got super sleepy, I put her back in her bassinet. And I called for the nurse to come get her and take her to the nursery um, because he was sleeping too. And I was just real protective over the girls. Like, no, uh-uh. Um, so I sent her back to the nursery. So when we woke up in the morning, I went in to see my other baby. And then we started filling out the paperwork um, so that we could you know, name them and everything. And then um, they started to try to get me to move my bowels. They started to try to make like little concoctions for me to drink prune juice and orange juice, warm it up and hopefully it'll make me go. It took it took me a minute. Oh, some apple juice in there too. It took a minute for it to work. And um, when it finally did, I literally had my child in my hand and I had to hurry and put her, I put her with her dad like super quick so that I could run into the bathroom and use the restroom. And then once I got done, I had came out and he didn't even budge he just she was right up on him and he was just laying there um didn't even move she was like right up on him and when i came out the bathroom i grabbed her so fast because i was like shit i wasn't even paying attention that he didn't pay attention when i tapped him to wake up to get her he didn't pay attention so she was kind of just laying in the same position in which like i had put like i feel like he was just way too sleep for me like i tapped him told him to get her he had her and then when I came out the bathroom he wasn't like holding her like he had her so I grabbed her real fast I wrapped her up I put her in the bassinet and I radio for the nurse to come and get her because I'm like okay this potion is working so um uh after I finally fell back asleep uh the next day was just kind of like me deciding what I wanted to do they told me I could stay longer since my one baby was in NICU um, but I was like, no, I'm, I'm ready to go ahead and get discharged. They made me take a CPR class. Once I took the CPR class and became certified, I could um, get closer to taking at least one of my babies home. So the day that I took the um, CPR class, I got back into the room and um, the nurse had came in the room and brought me the baby, uh, Nora. And we were just sitting in the room casually. I'm looking at her. I'm just taking in all her features. I'm staring at her. And then um, I have to change her pamper. She hates it. So she starts crying. After she starts crying, she starts choking. And I remember from the CPR class, they said that if your baby is silent, that that's a problem. But if she's crying, then it's okay. She can breathe. But she was silent and she was just wailing. So I immediately panicked and I ran out into the hallway with nothing but the nursery panties on. 
and I handed my baby to the nearest nurse and she literally just dug in her pocket, got the little nose bulb and was like, it's okay, it's okay. And she just squirted it out and squirted it onto her gown, squirted it out and squirted it onto her gown. She was like, it's okay. She turned her over, she tapped her on the back and then I could hear her little itty bitty little voice. And I was like, I kind of just rolled my eyes and started crying and then I went into the room and I was like this is hard like I was stressed out like this is hard he wasn't with me I was by myself in the room and I was just so like oh, she was like it's okay like this now you know so from that point on I had always had one of those nose bulbs with me like by my side because I couldn't imagine that happening again and um when I told the nurse to come and get the baby before I could get in the shower because um he still wasn't back he was running some errands and he still he still didn't get back to the hospital yet so um I needed him to pick me up some food because I was tired of the hospital food so I had him running some errands I needed him to grab me some more clothes and do something else so he was gone so um I called the nurse back in there to come and get the baby so that I could take a shower. So once I go get in the shower, the nurse comes back in the room and she knocks on the door and I'm like, hey, what's going on? She was like, hey, mom. So um, Nora actually is going to go have to go to the ICU with her sister. So I'm like, what? For what? Like, why? Why does she have to go to NICU? Like, now I'm confused because what the heck just happened? Like, she was just fine. I was going to be able to take her home. Like, why does she have to go to NICU? So, um, she's like, yeah, well, her temperature keeps dropping. She just, she, she won't, um, stay at the temperature that we need her. She keeps getting cold. And because she gets cold, she's not eating her meals like she should. And, um, yeah, we're going to have to tube her and put her under a heat lamp so that her body can regulate the temperature and that she'll want to eat again. Because right now we're being so cold, she just wants to sleep. So I just bust out crying. I could not believe it. I'm like, dang, like, I started questioning me as a mother. You know, I just started questioning, like, a lot of things. I had called him and I was crying. He was like, I'm on the way. Um, it, Everything's okay. I called my mom. She was on the way as well. Like, everybody was rushing to my aid. I was just crying in the room. The lady that was making up my bed, she started crying. Then the nurse that had came in there to give me the news, she started crying. She was like, I hate having to tell parents this type of stuff because... I'm too emotional and but she was like I promise it's gonna be okay she assured me over and over and over and I was just so worried um I stood at the window while they uh prepared her to go to ICU like a little sad puppy and I was watching them put the little shades on her and put her under the lamp hi mama I'm recording the video baby I'm coming in a minute go ahead did you put your bowl in the sink why Make it happen, Captain. Can you Harley, you just walked all the way over here. You can walk in there. Where is what is Nora doing? Um, I watched them put all the equipment on her in order to take her to the NICU, and then um, once they got to the NICU, they both they put them both together. And I used to hear stories all the time, and I thought they were myths that you know one twin needs the other. Um, because they survive like that in the womb, it's kind of hard for them to survive like that outside of the womb, especially when it's early on, like they should be by each other. So Marley was kind of like staying stagnant like the whole time. But as soon as Nora was uh, put down there with her, they put their bassinet side by side and put them under the same lamp. Um, I got the call the next day that they were being moved to another floor. And although the other floor wasn't like that, I could take them home right away. It was just a stable environment. Whereas the floor that I left them on, they were in like the ICU, ICU part where these babies have to go through surgery and all types of stuff. Um, so they were just watching both of them in that part. And then I got the call the next day that they got moved over to the stable, the stable department, I guess. I call it like a little baby apartment complex. Like it was so many different um hallways with babies on it these babies had bassinets and cradles and cribs in there like they legit came in and made it like their room and it's because even though this child is stable depending upon the child like you don't know how long this child has to stay because some people have their babies way early and they have to stay even though they're stable they just have to stay here until they're 
comfortable with letting, releasing them and sending them home. Um, so my babies also had to stay. It ended up being like um, a two-week process. But finally, I, I used to call up there every night during their feed schedule to see how they how they were doing like did she eat did she eat did she eat did she eat I used to call every single like get on these people nerves my daughters were inside of like a little room that had its own phone so I would call and I talked to the nurse every single time did she eat did she eat so um and every morning I would go up there and then every night I would call up there um so one day I had got up there after a few weeks I had went up there and I saw these little white papers attached to their bassinets so I went to read the papers and it said, we're almost ready to go home. Do you have these things to make sure that you're able to take me with you or something like that? So I was like, yes, like I was jumping for joy, happy that my babies were about to be discharged and I had to just get everything on a checklist. So I had to make sure I filled out the paperwork. I had to make sure I did the CPR class, um, had the car seat and then my baby passed the car seat test. Um, and I think it was a couple more things, but all of those things I already had. Um, I was able to take Nora home first and then I came back and got Marley. She was like two days out. So got Nora, then we wait two days and I was able to get Marley. So now we're all home. The gang's all here. Um, he ends up, my daughters were born in May. He has to turn himself in by November. So he was there the whole time for the girls. Um, and then he ended up turning himself in. After he turned himself in, you know, I wasn't mentally prepared. I cried the whole time. Like I took the girls to my mom's house and I just, I, I cried at the thought of him, you know, leaving. And we had gotten the timing that he was gonna have to leave and it was for like four and a half, almost five years. And it was just rough. It was rough to think about. It was rough to, um, to know that he was about to walk into this place and I wasn't gonna see him for this long. Um, it was just really rough, you know, knowing that he wasn't going to be around his babies and how much he adored them and loved them. Um, you know, like it, it was, yeah, it was hard in the moment. It really was. I cried. I cried so much. I tried to keep it all the way together, all the way there. And then like, I just wished I could have took him back home with me. Like when we, um, got inside of the prison I was like he started crying he started telling me to stop crying I was crying he was crying I was just I did not want to leave him I kept turning around and looking back at him I was like oh my gosh like it was the worst feeling ever I cried the whole way home I was like oh worst feeling ever so when I got in the car I had called my friend and she was pregnant at the time um, and I was just crying and she was like, you know, I'm pregnant. Why would you call me crying like this? I was so upset. I drove straight to her and I kind of just laid there for a minute. Um, I was just so upset and I knew that it was going to be a long road. Um, but nonetheless, it was, it was adventurous. It was a lot going on, you know? Um, my babies grew up very, they're very healthy. They're very, very well mannered. I feel like they are advanced, you know, for their age. Um, I feel like they're smart, beautiful little girls. One of them looks spitting image to him. Um, and she behaves like him too. I don't even know how she got that way, but she did. Um, yeah, life was different and, you know, that is another story that I'm going to leave for another day but yeah that was my pregnancy and it was lovely it was an experience I loved it um in the moment it had its moments where it was just a lot for me um but I wouldn't trade it and I feel like it made me to be the person that I am you know the experiences that I had uh my girls are amazing like I just love being their mom I love how much they adore me and it's like the best gift I could have ever had I could have ever given myself he could have ever given me it's like the best gift that we could have created because these are my little little besties just running around here always interrupting stuff but I love it um and yeah I wouldn't trade it for the world I don't think I'm having any more kids but you know I'm gonna make sure that my my daughters call me their bestie too because yeah 
but um I'm gonna attach some videos a few videos and stuff um the girls as they were growing they were very advanced I'm going to put um some time stamps on them so that you guys can see that even though my daughters were considered to be preemies they that did not stunt their growth and it did not stunt their ability to learn um their walking ability their talking ability it didn't stunt any of that they are very bright girls and that's still to this day and i'm grateful for that so it's been real i know it's been a long time but i'm coming back with my story times i didn't want to get too long-winded um and i skipped through a lot of things just to um save time because i know we're on a time limit and i don't want to do anything over an hour but um yeah i'm gonna add the pictures and videos and i hope y'all enjoy love y'all bye so oh hey <laughs> you gonna say hi, say hi. Yes. yeah hi <laughs> Say hi. 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 Oh. <laughs> yeah. Say hi. 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 Uh, yeah. No, say hi. Say hi. <laughs> say hi, mommy. Hi. All right, so Marley, stop guys. Marley has shown me that she knows how to get to YouTube on this phone. She's one. Let's try it again. Go ahead, turn it back on, baby. Uh oh. <laughs> I just want to make sure that I'm not tripping. Go back to it. <coughs> what you doing? What you doing? What are you doing? Nora. What are you doing? Nora, what are you doing? Go, Nora, go, Nora, go, Nora, go, Nora, go, Nora, hey, go, Nora. Beautiful. Hi. Hey, mommy's gorgeous baby, Marley. What are you doing? I like you. What are you doing right there? You want your pacifier? Hi. What color is it? Um, red. You have fire. a. You have a red fire. My ticket fire. M Marley took it. My ticket. Marley. Mm. Okay, it's okay. I'm about to go get you one. Come on, we can go. Stop. I know we're gonna go find one. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Grandma, you talking to Grandma on the phone? Who you on the phone with, Nora? I don't know. Really? Marley, what are you cooking? Yeah. What is it? Oh, Nora, are you drinking some coffee? Mm -hmm. Okay. Handle your business. Mmm, oh. thank you. Mm. Oh no! Bad baby! Bad baby? Bad baby! Bad baby? Yes! Nora, what you have? Nora, what is that? 
Uh uh, put it on your napkin. Put it on the napkin. Pick it up. Hey, put it on the napkin. Pick it up. Pick it up. Good job. Pick it up. Put it on your napkin. Good job. Yeah, there you go. Good job. Put it on your napkin. Uh oh. What happened? What happened? It's a knife. You dropped it. It's okay. We don't need it. <laughs> All right. Hello, hello, everybody. Today we're going <laughs> to... All right. Hello, everybody. Today we're going <laughs> to... <laughs> hello, everybody. Today we're going to do a, a special confetti. Woo! <laughs> Big to face.